Hello to um, everybody on the line. Uh, thanks for joining us um, on this <laughs> webinar. Uh, we'll get going with the webinar very shortly and um, we'll just give people time to join us. Um, in the meantime, if you could use the chat function on your panel, it'd be great to find out where everyone is joining us from today. Um, so please do use that, that chat function. Let us know where you're joining us from. We tend to get a lot of international audience um, as well as people from the Australian cities. Um, so yeah, we'll give people a few minutes to dial in and join us, but please do let us know where you're from. Malaysia, wonderful, hello. Hong Kong as well, we've definitely got an international audience for you today, Michael. Very good. Singapore as well, lovely. Kuala Lumpur, Cyprus, you've got a fellow somebody from Cyprus. Michael's actually oh, dialing in today from Cyprus as well. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you to everybody um, on the line for joining us today um, on this webinar about the OCIMF SIA2 tanker vetting program. Uh, my name is Holly Baldwin. I'm from Informa Corporate Learning. And um, the content of this webinar will go for about 20 minutes and then we will do a Q&A session at the end where we will answer as many questions as we possibly can. So please, 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 as we go through the webinar, if you have any questions, please do use either the chat function or the Q&A tab, um, and we'll answer as many of those as we possibly can. Um, but in the meantime, over to yourself, Michael. Well, thank you, Holly, for the introduction. And if you would like to know a bit more about me, you can find my profile on LinkedIn. Vetting has been a fact of life in the tanker industry for over 30 years now, and it has become well acknowledged that the single biggest influence on the safety management of tankers is the oil majors vetting process. The reason is simple. It hits the operators with the low standards where it hurts the most, in their pockets or their bank balances. If they don't maintain a standard expected by the oil majors, then they don't get the cargo charter. The SIA tanker vetting program was introduced by OCIMF in 1993 as a means of allowing the oil majors to share their tanker inspection reports. The letter E in SIA is for exchange. In 1997, the members of OCIMF agreed to establish a uniform vessel inspection procedure using a standard vessel inspection questionnaire, the VIQ. The VIQ has been revised several times over the years. We're presently on VIQ 7, but always following the same general format of dividing the different areas of tanker operations and management into relevant chapters, crewing, navigation, engineering, and so on. In 2017, the members of OCIMF decided to make a radical change to the way the tanker is inspected and the way that the inspection results are reported and presented. Three working groups were set up, reporting in turn to a steering group tasked with delivering the new programme with a target of second quarter 2022. The new regime will be known as SIA2 not an acronym this time. This webinar will examine the limited information that has been released from OCIMF to date, discuss the effects that SIA2 may have on the tanker industry in general, and explore ways that tanker owners can prepare in order to be ready when the new revised SIA2 is launched with its target date of April, 2022. Before I move on, I should be clear that I am not employed by OCIMF, nor any of its members, nor affiliated to them in any way. This presentation is a condensed version of various information sources on the subject that are freely available on the internet. Plus a little insight gained through my 15 years of working as a SIRE inspector and as a TMSA auditor. I'm sorry, but the uh, it, the, the uh, PowerPoint's not moving on. I'm just going to exit it and then restart it.
Now it's working. Back to the PowerPoint. What is SIA? As the industry continues to evolve, its risk profile changes and the management of risk also has to evolve. In recent years, more sophisticated risk measurement and management tools have been developed. SIA 2 uses the bow tie model of identifying and analyzing risk. So called because the representative diagram is shaped like James Bond's bow tie. There are various representations available, some quite complex. The one on the screen, I think, is a simple but clear illustration of what it means. In this diagram, the word event could be changed to hazard or risk for the purpose of SIA 2. It's not yet clear exactly how the new question set will be set out, but the questions are expected to be graded into four key areas. Core. A minimum question set required to meet the fundamental assessment criteria of the vessel type. They are related to significant risks on board a vessel, as defined by OCIMF. Rotational. Non-core questions assigned to a vessel according to an algorithm embedded into the inspection program software. These questions may be allocated over several inspections of the same vessel, but their order cannot be predicted. It will be according to the algorithm. Conditional. Vessel specific questions based on available data on the vessel, its operator, or the ship type, such as an aspect of the vessel's operational history. And more to come on that one later. Campaign, time limited questions covering an area of specific focus from OCIMF in response to an incident or an industry trend, possibly similar to the campaigns used by port state control organizations targeting specific areas of the vessel and its management for a limited period of time. A core element of the new SIA takes a human-centered approach. This is a significant change to the inspection regime, which will provide a defined process for uncovering systemic issues, which might lead to a critical activity, not protecting the ship. This human-centered approach looks at the physical, psychological and social factors that affect human interaction with equipment, with processes and with other people in order to identify and minimize potential risks. Crucially, it recognizes that human error, actions and decisions are often the result of the way the workplace is set up, how work, equipment and safeguards are designed and how leaders influence the work culture. There are conditions that can set a person up to succeed or fail. These conditions are known as performance influencing factors, PIFs. They influence reliable execution of critical tasks. SIA 2 is designed to help users of the program understand and tackle PIFs by identifying objective conditions that go beyond the individual and giving vessel operators and crew systematic opportunities to improve. Finally, the inspector will be required to use an intrinsically safe electronic tablet computer dedicated solely for carrying out SIA2 inspections. The tablet must be carried by the inspector throughout the entire inspection and any observations written onto it as and when seen. How will SIA 2 work? In the present system, there are two documents that must be provided by the operator prior to an inspection. 
an up-to-date harmonized vessel particulars questionnaire and a crew matrix. This will be significantly expanded in SIA 2. In SIA 2, these documents must be uploaded to the SIA database for each specific vessel prior to each specific inspection. We still have the HVPQ and we have the pre-inspection questionnaire. This is expected to be an online questionnaire completed by the vessel operator, providing information about the vessel and supplementing the HVPQ. I assume that this will include the crew matrix also. It may include details of internal and external audits carried out on the vessel, for example, ISM audits, navigation audits, technical superintendents reports, etc. Certificates. The operator will be required to upload copies of all the vessel's certificates, keeping them up to date, such as after class surveys, etc. Photographs. A representative and standardized set of photographs of the vessel must be uploaded to be refreshed at about six monthly intervals or if there's been any material change in the vessel. I understand that the HVPQ is also presently under revision as a separate project, but no target date has yet been announced on that. All operator generated documents will be automatically downloaded to the inspector's tablet when an inspection is confirmed. Negative observations recorded at the last previous SIRE inspection will also be automatically downloaded to the tablet. The software algorithm will then insert rotational, conditional, and campaign questions to be used for this inspection. Why use a tablet? The tablet will contain all of the pre-inspection information which the inspector can refer to as the inspection progresses around the vessel. The algorithm in the tablet will create a compiled vessel inspection questionnaire, a CVIC specific to that ship on that occasion for that inspection. The answers to questions should be set out with menus and checkboxes, which will allow a greater data mining, as they call it, by the report's recipients to detect weaknesses in company and ship level management practices. The tablet will record the dates and times of all interactions with an active inspection, both before and after a physical inspection. It will record the date, time and GPS position of the start, suspension, resumption and completion of a physical inspection. The date and times of all observations recorded, positive and negative, during the physical inspection. It will even record the step count of the inspector during the physical inspection and their progress around the vessel via GPS. The tablet will contain an integral camera for taking photographs. These can be used as evidence for observations or to show best practice to yes answers. Two models of tablet are being trialed, as you can see on the slide. It's not yet declared which one will be used, or indeed if either of them will be used in the end. On the slide, you can see a snapshot of how negative observations will be presented on the tablet. A main menu of primary subject, which when opened will open a submenu of nature of concern. I understand that there will still be a facility for the inspector to write the observation in their own words as seen. This could also include a facility for making voice memos which can be written down later. Uh, my apologies for the poor quality of the snapshot here. I copied it from the Ockinf website and the original was no better than this. 
but I think it still gives an illustration of how it will look. Conduct of the inspection. The inspector will carry out a document review prior to boarding by checking all the certificates and information given in the PIQ. The time for onboard inspection is fixed at eight hours. All the questions are allocated a period of time for the inspector to review the item in question and write their answer. The format of the CVIC, as I call it, will be entirely different to the present VIQ7 format. It will be compiled specifically for that ship on that occasion for that inspection. Hardware subject deficiencies will be basically as seen, but human and process deficiencies may be linked to TMSA KPI. The onboard document review will be a brief sample review to confirm the certificates uploaded are correct. The inspector must validate the photos posted by the operator and take their own photos, particularly for observations. Also, if an operator photograph is not truly representative, then the inspector may take a photo of the same scene. Observations can be graded to capture shades of yes, exceeds expectation, as expected, largely as expected, not as expected. This is the negative answer. All questions must be answered during the course of the inspection, such that the report is largely complete before the inspector leaves the vessel. The information to date does not specify exactly what order the inspection will take, but it is common sense, to me anyway, that it should follow the same order that it always has. Opening meeting, document review, bridge, tour of the deck, cargo control, engine room and accommodation, and finally a closing meeting. After leaving, the inspector has 72 hours to review the report for such as errors and omissions and upload it to the SIA database. The time period for the operator responses to the observations may be reduced from 14 calendar days to seven working days. Presumably that does not include weekends and holidays, but there are no weekends and holidays on board a tanker. Operator comments will follow a formulaic approach rather than an open text box for general free text comments as at present. What next? The OCIMF has published a FAQ document which can be downloaded free of charge from their website if you haven't already done so. One of the questions addresses the plan to explain SIA 2 to ship operators and crew. Their answer to that question, which I'll quote, OCIMF is implementing a robust SIA 2 communication plan to ensure that vessel operators and other users of the SIA program are aware of the key changes due to take place. The plan includes engagement with all relevant tanker industry associations and a series of webinars to help prepare vessel operators for SIA 2. To date, I'm not aware of any of this happening yet. How can operators manage inspection results of their own vessels. OCINF has developed a new application program interface, API, for SIA2 integration to a member company's in-house SIA platform. Member companies that do not intend to use it can use a cloud-based system from where they can download their reports. It's not clear from the information presently available if the facility to data mine the inspection records will be possible with the cloud-based access or if the API must be used. 
It's also not clear if this API will be made available to entities other than OCINF members, such as operators, charterers, or state control, etc. From the tanker operator's perspective, the workload on the vetting managers will significantly increase. Operators may want to consider assigning additional staff, at least in the startup phase. The new formulaic approach to the way operators' responses are recorded could include some cross-reference to TMSA. Vetting staff should be familiar with the company's TMSA and able to find cross-references. Introducing the new regime to crew in a controlled manner, such as officers' seminars or onboard training by visiting superintendents. Finally, the diagram at the bottom summarizes the new process in a nutshell. I downloaded this also from the OCIMF website. Well, that's all we have time for. But uh, before we move on to addressing your questions, can I first draw your attention to a couple of other matters? If you're interested in learning more about vetting and tanker management in general, but don't have the time or inclination for taking a formal course of study, you might want to consider the online recorded course in tanker management provided by Informa Asia. This is structured as six one hour recorded lectures by me, each covering a different aspect of tanker management. Released weekly over a six week period, each module is divided into three to five short bite sized presentations, leaving you to choose when you want to allocate the odd 20 minutes to learning. On the other hand, if you want something more challenging, you could consider the online course offered by Lloyd's Maritime Academy, a member of the Informa group of companies, leading to a formal academically recognized diploma in tanker management. This is a one year course in 10 modules released at about monthly intervals. That course is also written and delivered entirely by me. If you feel up to the challenge, please check out the Informa website for details. And now over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Michael. It was a really interesting insight into the changes that are coming next year. Um, as Michael said, if you do um, have any further questions on the training that he offers, please do let us know. Um, we also do in-house training for groups of attendees. So if you have a group or a team that you think would benefit, please do let us know. Um, the best email to reach us on is training at informer.com.au. Uh, we have had some brilliant questions come in, so please do keep them coming as we will now move to the Q&A section. Um, so the first one, Michael says, um, you said rotational questions. So will these be random questions for that particular vessel inspection, not following the VIQ sequence? I don't think so. Um, from the information I have found, um, which uh, is limited, um, the... Uh, OCIMF intend to publish um, a, an entire inspection question library. Uh, I think they have a target date of January 2022 on that. And that will include just about every question that could be raised in any inspection. Um, I, I think there's going to be rather a lot of inspections. And um, it's really just down to which question will be allocated to this particular in question, uh, uh, inspection. But I, I believe that operators will have the chance to prepare for any question that might pop up when this inspection library is made available. Uh, as I said, they expect to do it in January 22. Wonderful, thank you, Michael. Um, before we move on to the next question, we have had a few people ask, if a copy of this will be available. Um, yes, we will send out a recording of the session. Um, so we'll pop over an email to everyone who registered so you will have a copy of this recording. Um, the next one says, judging from the proposed real-time reporting format, it appears that if something has been recorded as an observation during the course of an inspection, 
the pleading session at the end of an inspection will become irrelevant question mark. Excuse me, just getting a dry throat. No, no, that's um, um, been accounted for in the uh, planning for this. Again, as I understand from uh, what Ockham have uh, released to date, the, um, the closing meeting will still be as it always was. The uh, tablet will have a facility for printing out the observations raised at this inspection, uh, which will be uh, shared copies shared between the master and the inspector. And if the master has any concerns about observations, they can be discussed and uh, if necessary, deleted. Or as in the present um, regime, if the observation has been corrected during the course of the inspection, then this can be recorded in the inspection report. Perfect. This next one, Michael, is quite similar. It says, do you think the inspector will provide any list of observation to the master after completion of inspection? And uh, brackets, preliminary report. Yes, yes, that's will, as I just said, uh, that is basically the same as it always has uh, from what they've uh, released to date. The, the tablet will have the facility for printing out the um, the observation sheet. Uh, I understand that they will require that there should be a, a wireless printer available so that the tablet can connect to the wireless printer, perhaps in the master's office and uh, print out a hard copy of the observations. This is still going to follow the same uh, formula as it always has, so I understand. Yeah, good to cover that point off. Um, the next one says, this is a really interesting one. It says photos might trigger a security concern, especially inspection will be taking place in a when the vessel is interface operation with the terminal. Not an EX concern, but security concern as some terminals are very strict with photos in the terminal port limit. How do you see this to be catered for by the OCIMF? Uh, yes, the, this is uh, addressed in the uh, the FAQ document that they have published. And um, the first thing that they say is that they do intend to uh, pursue uh, a very uh, aggressive or positive program of uh, speaking to terminal owners and operators uh, to address security issues particularly. And uh, if uh, any particular security issues have been raised by the terminal or indeed by the operator, uh, for any particular inspection, then the inspector will be um, required to either exercise discretion as to where he takes the photographs, or indeed, if the uh, terminal is so strongly against it, then perhaps photographs will not be permitted. But uh, Ockham, as they say, are uh, following a, a very positive program of engaging with terminal operators, and they expect that this problem will um, be sorted out by the time this uh, system goes live. Yeah, it's a good point to cover that one, definitely. Um, the next one says, does rotational set of questionnaires mean that the questionnaires will differ from ship to ship and inspection to inspection? Uh, yes, they will, uh, in that the, the library is prepared, but we also have to prepare for the possibility that new inspect, uh, questions may be raised, which are depending on the, uh, the PIQ, the, the, um, the one which is just for this inspection, because there could be details in that, that the algorithm will pick up and ask the uh, inspector to perhaps probe a little deeper. So uh, there is always the chance that the um, rotational questions might include something that is not in the library, uh, but uh, I would say that that would have to be taken on a case by case basis. Uh, as we all know, this is still very early days. We haven't seen the, um, the, the question set yet because it hasn't been released by Ockinf. Yeah, it's a good thing to look to for the future though, definitely that one. Um, the next one says, do you see this being applied to PFSO slash MOPU? 
PF, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> security, uh, security officers. Yeah. Part, part. Um, I, I would say only in that first we've got the security issue of taking the photographs. So uh, if there's going to be security issues with the terminal, then obviously it's the port security officer who is going to be addressing that. Um, so there may be issues in the startup phase, uh, as I understand it from Okinf, as I've just said, they intend to engage with terminal operators, which will include their port security officers. We have to also include our company security officers. Um, so uh, this security issue, uh, it is a concern to me too, uh, but the it, basically I got most of my information from a one hour webinar, which Okinf did for their members only. Don't ask how I got the copy of it, but uh, this was addressed in that webinar and they are confident that it will be sorted out when the, the system goes live. But um, I think you alluded to this first one at the beginning, uh, Michael, but it says, what is the timeline we are looking at for this SIA 2 to come into force? Uh, well, the, the, uh, the, the information to date says that they want to go live with it in April of 2022. Um, personally, I think that's rather an ambitious uh, target, but uh, I, I've been following it, um, their progress through their website. Um, they have already started training for the inspectors. I believe their first training courses in the new regime for uh, existing inspectors uh, started in July of this year. So um, they feel confident it will go in April next year um, unless they um, post any information to the contrary. I think we as the industry must be ready for April next year. Yeah, plan, plan for it and then see what happens after that. I think you're right though, Michael. I think it might yeah. be a bit ambitious, but we'll see how we go. Um, the next one says, how will PIF work? That, again, is a mystery um, because what they've, um, what they've said on this uh, webinar that I watched is the PIF will support the, um, um, oh, wait a minute, oh, sorry, PIF, Performance Influencing Factor, sorry, I'm mixing it with the, uh, the ship-specific uh, um, questionnaire. Uh, the PIFs, uh, this is uh, human um, in, uh, factors, and this this is um, this is kind of the fundamental core of this new sire is performance influencing factors, the human uh, side of the management of ships, and um, it, it's going to be looking not at you know the AB couldn't answer the question how to put on. Uh, the uh, breathing apparatus, for example, it's going to be looking at why he's not able to answer this question or demonstrate something. Is it a, a training issue? Is it uh, some, some other issue? Uh, and so, as they say, it's a systemic uh, matter to look at why people do things in a certain way. And, and this is the performance influencing factors, uh, which is quite different to the uh, soft skills type of um, uh, uh, focus on, on the way that, like, is the third officer uh, personally able to take a bridge watch? Is, is he going to fold up under pressure? That's entirely different to these performance influencing factors, which is looking at the more, more the training uh, and the way that the system is set up to enable that third officer to do his job properly. The next one says, any guidelines if inspectors can't accomplish the CQIV by eight hours? Um, only what I've said so far is that uh, it's expected that they will be able to do it in eight hours. I understand that the tablet actually times. So I understand that perhaps there will be some function where the inspector has to start the time for a, a question. And then uh, the software will expect him to answer that question within a certain period of time. They also say that each question will be allocated the same amount of time. Um, other than, like, as we are in VIQ now, some questions 
require some quite deep probing by the inspectors and other than, uh, others can just be answered uh, basically in a couple of seconds. Uh, it, it appears that the way that they're approaching this is that every question will be given an equal amount of time. If the inspector cannot complete the inspection within the eight hours, if it's something to do with the ship, then that will have to be recorded. Perhaps they're taking stores, perhaps they're doing a crew change, but this is already addressed in the present regime and that will have to be recorded in any interruption and resumption of, as I mentioned in one of the slides, any interruptions in the inspection will of course be added on to that eight hours. The eight hours is just for the inspection uh, part of it. The next one says, um, Okim has asked us brackets inspectors to provide feedback on terminals allowing the use of intrinsically safe cameras and or tablets. However, in many locations, permission to use this equipment depends on the loading master on duty at the time, and there are not really many standardised policies around it. Yes, that, uh, that's my experience also. And um, well, uh, again, just going back to the information that has been given by Okim, they have addressed that uh, question and they appear to be confident that they can uh, come to an amicable arrangement with terminals to have it within their procedures, such as the loading master will not be um, using his own initiative, the procedure will be there written into their uh, terminal procedures for him to act on it. Uh, this is just what I understand from what the Ockham have, uh, have posted to date. Yep, still a few things that need to be ironed out around that. Um, the next one says, do you think that vetting inspectors will be affected a lot by the previous vetting observations or results when they, when they again issue their own report? That's another question that I would also wonder about being a SIRE inspector myself, albeit retired now, but... Um, I think it's there to, um, well, first that the inspector should go and check that the uh, observation raised at the previous inspection has been corrected. Uh, it's all very well for the operators to post a, a nice response to say we have corrected it, but until someone goes and actually uh, sees the corrective action, how do we know that it's correct? So I think OCIMF, perhaps, maybe they're being a little bit cynical here, in not taking the operator's word for it for the previous SIR inspection. Um, but um, that's, that's the impression I get anyway, is that the inspector will have a look at the area of the previous one. Perhaps then the, um, these rotational questions will even bring up a question. Um, can you verify that the previous observation has been corrected? something like that. But again, this is only my um, speculation, if you like, based on my previous experiences. The next one I think is more of a statement, um, but it says the SIA 2 question set will be released to Intertanko members for review and comment for technical accuracy on the 1st of October, 2021, with the deadline for comment set for the 24th of October, 2021. Uh, sorry, can you say that again? I didn't quite catch the first part of it. Yeah, it's more of a more of a statement. It says the SIA 2 question will be released to Intertanko members for review and comment for technical accuracy on the 1st of October, with a deadline okay. for comment set for the 24th of October. Well, so somebody's got one step ahead of me. That's very, I would be very uh, interested to see that on the 1st of October which happens to be my birthday. I think I'll have my mind on other things. Oh, great day all round then, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> the next one says, how does Okimf intend to deal with the odd occasion on which a loading master refuses permission? Well, again, that's going back to the, um, their programme of engaging with the terminals. Uh, hopefully, they hope that the terminal masters will all be well aware of the engagement process that has taken place. It will be written into his uh, guidelines for carrying out his job. Of course, there's always the facility for uh, one loading master to disagree. And then it's down to the inspector to call the inspecting company who appointed him and to go round the full circle to the, um, to the uh, loading master's uh, um, management uh, 
uh, and hopefully resolve the problem that way. Yeah, the next one says, are you able to elaborate on the operator response to the observation under SIA 2? Under VIQ 6, operator has a free text box in which to respond. Uh, yes. Well, yes and no, in that, yes, they do have uh, a free text box to write uh, their responses. And over the years, I've seen some uh, totally hopeless responses and I've seen some very good ones. Uh, I expect they're going to have... Uh, some operators already have a very positive procedure of doing this. Indeed, I've seen some responses to some quite minor observations that I've written up uh, with the uh, operator responding with uh, several pages of uh, root cause analysis and, and, and all kinds of other details. Uh, it's hard to say what they're going to do there. Obviously, they're not going to want a couple of pages of root cause analysis but they are want to, to see some way that this can be addressed, but also that the, it can be recorded in such a way that the uh, recipients can, as they call it, data mine, not only the report and the observations, but also the manner of the responses uh, in, in order to um, address how the management of the ship is, is being carried out, uh, not just on the deck level, but also on the top management level. It's gonna be interesting to see how they um, formulate this, but at the moment, all they've said is that it will follow a formulaic approach. Next one says, some location of inspection, so the vessel location may be out of signal or coverage area. Do you think it will have some consequences? Uh, you mean coverage area by GPS? <laughs> I think it covers most of the world anyway. Um, but um, if there's, uh, this could be, uh, for example, in um, offshore ship-to-ship uh, -ship transfer operations. And I know I've done ship-to-ship uh, -ship, um, inspections when I've been 25, 30 miles offshore. Uh, so if there's a GPS signal, they say that the tablet will be able to pick it up. Um, if there is no GPS signal, then the VIQ or the CVIC is still going to be embedded into the uh, tablet. And so I expect that the inspection will go ahead. They've also addressed the possibility that the tablet might crash, uh, in which case the inspector will be uh, um, have to resort to using a hard copy um, check, uh, checklist to carry around with him. Uh, but they seem to be quite confident that this will be very rare, if ever. Uh, do you know how inspectors will be selected? Is it through Common App or individual OM? I think the, uh, the inspectors will be selected in the same way that they always have. Uh, obviously, the inspector must have been trained in the in the SIA 2 program. Uh, OKIMF have been very uh, uh, positive in inspecting. The, uh, uh, training existing inspectors uh, to start with and um, I, I expect that the inspectors will be uh, familiar enough with it when it goes live. I think did, did that answer the question? Kind of lost, lost the thread of it there for a moment. Yeah it was just about how they'll be selected so I think so uh, yes. Okay. Well yeah I, I think that they will be selected in the same way that they, that they are now basically that the, the operator will request uh, an inspection and uh, to a certain uh, OKINF uh, inspecting company, and the inspecting company will then look at their available inspectors in the region where the inspection is requested, and then it will go to the particular quest, uh, inspector. I can't see that changing, really. Yeah. Um, the next one says, is CQIV a dynamic document? What document will vessels use to prepare their vessels in comparison to the old VIQ-7? Yeah, that's another one addressed in the Ockham's uh, FAQ uh, document. And um, uh, well, the only thing that we can see at the moment is that when they release the inspection library, the, the question library, it's down to somebody in the operators um, reading it. They, they said that they will also be engaging with uh, industry. Uh, we've, we've just really, we've just had a statement from somebody 
that they are planning to engage with um, uh, Intertanko as early as next week. Uh, so it will be interesting to see how that will um, cascade its way down from Okinf to Intertanko and then down to the Intertanko members. Uh, and I expect there should be some engagement there for members to become familiar with how the questions are going to be set and how they can prepare. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Um, the next one again is concerns around photos, which I think is definitely valid. It says we are already using or trying to use Ecom tablet for our own inspection. However, many terminals do not allow to take photos slash recordings alongside their births. What to do in this case and who will ask for permission for taking photos slash recordings on board? Yeah, well, it, this takes us all the way back to an earlier question and also um, uh, well, yeah, I raised that on one of the slides, but perhaps not. Uh, I didn't raise the fact that uh, Ockinf do intend to engage with all the terminals. Uh, if, if in the end a terminal uh, does not agree with Ockinf and that they will not allow photographs to be taken, then the inspector will have to use their discretion uh, uh, in not taking the photographs. But as I said, Ockinf seem to be quite confident that they will clear this question before the, uh, the new process goes live. Yeah, this next one's a good question. It says, do you know if there's any initiative from Ockinf to also have some kind of harmonization, um, e.g. too many oil majors insist on their own sire in spite of valid sires to avoid too frequent of sire inspections? Yeah, the uh, Ockinf have also addressed that, and in fact, uh, I understand Ockinf have addressed that right from the very beginning when they started the uniform inspection procedure way back in 1997. Um, th this is down to individual Ockinf members, and Ockinf does not really have any control on that. They can provide the platform for the members to inspect the vessels, but whether a member will continue to require their own inspections or accept the inspection of another member is really down to the Ockinf member themselves and I, I can't see that changing. Yeah it's a good question though that one. Um, the next one says is document review limited to certificates or even just record keeping? That again is basically down to the inspector. Uh, as I understand it um, all of the ship's trading certificates uh, should be uploaded to the um, SIA database such that the inspector can download them to his tablet. Um, so it, it's really not 100% clear on what the inspector will be required to do. But I do know that over the years, uh, even, even on a fairly new ship with not a lot of documentation, it can take over two hours to do the document review. And I have uh, experienced myself on an older ship, maybe 18 years old, with a, a long uh, ESP file and various other um, historical documents can take well over three hours. I've also heard that some inspectors tend to... Um, try to look for things, uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's and spend an inordinate amount of time for uh, document review. So uh, this is, again, it's expected to be a, a, a short document review sampling to verify that uh, what has been uploaded is correct. If individual inspectors do continue to take several hours over this, then that's really between the, uh, the, the operator and the um, submitting member to get together and say, you know, we've already put all this information, we've spent a lot of time compiling this for you, and your inspector is just doing it like he always did and wasting our time. So um, I, I think this is a matter of getting the process going, uh, and hopefully the common sense of the inspectors will prevail and the document review will be a very quick I would say maximum half an hour, but we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, wonderful. Um, the next one says, we believe the focus in SIA 2 will now be on demonstration of competence by seafarers rather than a pure equipment condition based observation. 
Can you provide your thoughts on that? Um, yes and no. Yeah, the the um, they are certainly looking at the uh, the performance influencing factors, but this is not to say that the the AB or the third mate um, didn't know how to do so, a certain thing. It is still looking at the management of the vessel, the condition of the vessel. Um, if if there are you know rusty valves uh, and and pipelines, um, things that are not working, uh, plugs that are not in place, you know the simple things that we've seen for twenty or thirty years, these are still going to be there, and so it's not just looking at the ability of the crew it's looking at the hardware things are not there but it's looking beyond the hardware it's not why a certain thing is not working or not as it should be it's looking deeper into that at, at the systemic thing why did the crew allow that to happen and why did the management allow the crew to allow that to happen so i, I think it, this human factors approach goes a lot deeper than the human themselves. The next question says, uh, what kind of formula response do you think we're looking at? Ah, again, yeah, we've just had that when it uh, worded different, the, the formulate responses um, by the operator to uh, observations. It's very difficult to predict that. Um, because all they've said so far is it's going to be formulaic. My guess is that they will want to see a certain amount of root cause uh, uh, an analysis uh, addressing it. That they, they, I expect that they will want some cross-reference to the company's TMSA. Uh, ever since TMSA was introduced in 2004, I think I get the feeling that Okinf have had this trend that they want to bring SIA and TMSA so close together that they're basically the same thing. So I expect that this formulaic approach will uh, be looking for cross references to TMSA uh, as well as uh, a root cause analysis of what the company's procedure, uh, not only to correct that, but to an an analyze why it happened in the first place. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for that, Michael. I'm afraid that is all the time we've got today for questions. We had over 55 questions come in from you guys. So apologies that we can't get to all of them. Unfortunately, we'd, we'd be here all evening with those. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today and getting involved with this. Uh, we run webinars quite frequently, so please do look out for other webinars in the future that we run. Um, and obviously, if you do want any more information on some of the sessions that Michael runs, then please do get in touch with us. The information is on the screen. Um, but the biggest thanks for today definitely goes to yourself, Michael. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. You've been really generous with your questions and the presentation today. So thank you so much for joining us. Cheers.